Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Wednesday. We're going to talk about Jenna Ortega and we're going to talk about uh, Netflix and online drama, Twitter drama, about some things she said on a podcast regarding the direction of the show or some of the lines in the script she did not like. She did not think that it suited the Wednesday character. And uh, one of the people associated with the show called her out on Twitter and then uh, had to walk that back a little bit because it turns out they've like promoted her to executive producer of season two so or something. It was almost like she was right? It was almost like she might have been right. Yeah, now, look, I'm, I'm torn on this one because some people could look at this and be like, yeah, she's kind of acting like an entitled brat because she didn't know how the show was going to do at the time. But uh, the flip side of that is it turned out whatever decisions were ultimately made were correct because this show was a massive, well, massive hit. If she was a fan of Wednesday and thought it didn't reflect the character properly, how is it any different than Henry Cavill saying that the Witcher, and that everybody's agreeing that the Witcher wasn't the actual Witcher character? It sounds to me like, you know, if true, she didn't feel it reflected the character in the way that people know the character, and if the changes were made based on that, it actually helped the show, not hurt it. Yeah, I I think that is because a lot of people said that, you know, her portrayal of Wednesday was very, on, very much on the mark. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't watch it, but Pinky Boo did. I saw some of it as she was watching it. And I'm like, damn, this actually looks pretty good. Like, I will watch this. But some of the decisions, they sound like Netflix decisions. Like they tried to get her into a, a love triangle and all this other stuff. And well, she's like, that's not going to work. I saw other interviews with her that they said about people were like trying to push next season. Next season, we need to put her with her friend and all this other crap, you know, because, you know, ship, you know, if you're yeah. friends with somebody in your same gender, obviously you're gay. Um, so, but her comment to that was she wanted to see less romance in a second season and more, you know, good story and action, less romance for Wednesday. Yeah, and that is in line with the character because the character reluctantly would get involved in a romantic relationship. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's not a driving force in, in this character. Mm -hmm. So gay or straight, it doesn't matter. That's not the way she thinks. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this though. This is kind of interesting. This is a huge oopsie doopsie, I think, on the part of the producer that called her out because again. The guy is calling her out saying it was a lack of professionalism for her musing on the stuff that went down behind the scenes on the podcast, which like every Hollywood star does, mm -hmm. right? Everybody dunks on shows they've worked on. That's why people listen to these podcasts. They want the inside dirt. And he calls her out publicly on Twitter. Which made it blow for, up 10 times worse. Right. And it's like, but he, he calls her out and said it should have been dealt with privately. But why did you call her out publicly if it should have been dealt with privately? Why did you just call her and say, hey, don't, you probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that because it looks bad. Anyway, we're, we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Uh, let's see, we're at almost 300,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, now, Pinky Boo was on here before talking about Wednesday. Uh, she loves the show quite a bit. She is a huge Adams Family fan, a uh, huge fan of the 90s Adams Family movies. And uh, she got to meet Christina Ricci mm -hmm. last year. She loved she's that. She's very excited about that one. Yeah, she's very short. Christina Ricci is very mm -hmm. short. Well, Christina Ricci thought she was cute. She so. was, yeah, she was very, very nice. I, I don't, I mean, Christina Ricci was, I, I feel bad because she was running late and Pinky Boo. I mean, we waited for hours to go see her, and that's all That's all she wanted to do was go see Christina Ricci. We went to this convention, and you guys immediately went and got in line, that's where you stayed. Right. And uh, she was very, very nice, though. She was very nice. Actually, her handler was kind of like, eh. But Christina Ricci herself was actually very nice, and I think she wanted to talk to Pinky Boo more, but she couldn't because the line was, like, backed up. Yeah. But, um, anyway, uh, and she's on the show, by the way. Uh, Wednesday star Janet Ortega blasted by Hollywood producer Entitled and Toxic coming from the New York Post. Uh, Wednesday star Jenna Ortega is being condemned as entitled and beyond toxic. Oh, it's beyond. Not just toxic, but beyond. it's like beyond meat. Mm -hmm. Beyond toxic. By veteran Hollywood producer and filmmaker Stephen DeKnight. Uh, it was on this uh, Armchair Expert podcast. Uh, the 20-year-old admitted she behaved like an unprofessional uh, or in an unprofessional manner on the set of the show. Uh, taking to Twitter, DeKnight wrote that he loves talking with actors about their lines and stories, but sometimes the stars don't have the full pictures in TV of where the story is going and why some lines are needed for the whole to make sense. He partly blamed her age and, uh, for her actions. Her age. He also said she should be aware of how things work. So this is a public 
scolding by this guy. I don't, I don't really agree with this. I think if, if this guy is an older Hollywood veteran and his whole point is you shouldn't be airing dirty laundry in public, then you call her on the phone and say, hey, I listened to that podcast. Mm. Or someone told me about it. Or somebody told me about it. More likely that happened. Right. You sh- probably shouldn't have said that. Now, her future is secure because they're doing the season two, and I I believe she's been promoted to executive producer. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately she made the right call. Now, whether or not she's acting like a diva, uh, that's stuff in the air. Well, she even says that she did some things she shouldn't have done and was going to change some stuff. Now, I mean, like, I do agree that, you know, sometimes you don't understand where these lines are going to go later on the show. But um, it couldn't have been that bad because I don't understand why they did upgrade her. If it was she was so terrible to work with, and it was such a train wreck of ever proportions. Uh, this is why they upgraded her. One point zero two billion hours viewed from and, Wednesday. And not to defend her, she was being a diva, but she turned the role down repeatedly, and they kept going after her to take the role. Yeah, it was like I, she even said that. She said they kind of chased me. She said I was done doing TV. I didn't want. It. She's in Scream Six now, I guess, which is also mm-hmm. doing pretty well. Uh, she said I didn't want to do it. Um, she's going to be in Beetlejuice too. I guess Tim Burton likes working with her. You know, she's going to be Lydia's daughter, apparently, mm-hmm. in, in Beetlejuice, too. So not that she's going to be typecast as, like, the, All right, right. the new Winona writer, Christina Ricci. But, I mean, things are obviously going okay for her. So, yeah, this guy calls her out publicly. Um, she should ask herself how she would feel if the showrunners gave an interview and talked about how difficult she was and refused to perform the material. But she just did, though. He just publicly did it. Yeah. And uh, this is not a good look for him. Because no. this, this looks really petty. Like, you little bitch. You should have just... You shouldn't have done that, but let me, do it, let me do it more. Yeah, let me do it more. I'm doing the exact same thing I called you out for. This is Hollywood, man. This is... And he, he, he walks it back. He says he's, he's basically walking it back because he's afraid for his job. This kind of statement is beyond entitled and toxic. I love her work, but life's too short to deal with people like this in the business. Which basically implies you shouldn't be in the business. Yes. Um... Other people, like I have listened to a lot of different Hollywood podcasts. I just listened to one the other day with um, uh, Jonathan Frakes talking about behind the scenes stuff on Star Trek Next Generation and Picard. And like, look, these people go on these podcasts and they just kind of let it fly. I mean, it's a job like any other job, but it sounds to me like he might have gotten a call, you know, from somebody being like, were you giving her a hard time? What the hell, Steven? Mm-hmm. You know, and then he had to take the Twitter to... Well, here's what she said down here. He said that, you know, that on, on, on the podcast, she admitted she put her foot down verging on being unprofessional for the sake of her Adam's family character, whom she was very protective. I don't think I ever had to put my foot down more than on set in a way that... Um, in a way that I had to on Wednesday. Everything that Wednesday does, everything I had to play, did not make sense for her character at all. Yeah, um, and she gives some examples. She said her character uh, taking part in a love triangle made no sense yes, to her. she said she doesn't think they should even go with romance at all for further seasons. Uh, she repeatedly told writers no on plot points, even at times changing lines herself in the script. Uh, there were times on set where I became almost unprofessional. So she's admitting she wasn't unprofessional. She said I almost became unprofessional where I just started changing lines. Uh, the script supervisor Thought I was going with something, and then I had to sit down with the writers, and they'd be like, wait, what happened to the scene? And I have to go and explain why I couldn't go do certain things. She even went so far as to admit she was dissatisfied most of the time with her performance. Um, and she was afraid that, you know, people wouldn't... I mean, this is some pretty big shoes to fill. I mean, mm-hmm. Christina Ricci in the, the first two Adams Family movie was iconic, you know, and Wednesday Adams is, is a pop culture icon, and there's been a resurgence in popularity of the character. So, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you because know, everybody's like, why do we need another Adams family? But you it know? sounds like she went and did her homework on the character and wanted to make sure it stayed the character. Because let's be honest here. Do I think a Hollywood, you know, place like Netflix would try to, to, to and these writers they hire would be like, well, modern audiences, you know, would want this and not necessarily reflect the character? Yeah. No, they would never do that. <clears throat> Masters of the Universe Revelation. Yeah. They yeah. would never do that, Shira. You know, they would uh, never, ever do Cowboy that. Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, I mean, no, it goes on never. and on. So, yeah, it sounds like, I mean, there was there were at odds here. Now, what's interesting is this guy is just, he's a writer, produced whatever his deal is tonight. And he worked on Daredevil, but he also was a director, I think, of the second Pacific Rim, which in my mind does not exist. Um, yeah. You know, so, whatever. But, yeah, she got upgraded to executive producer because of the popularity, but Tim Burton had nothing but, and Tim Burton doesn't pull punches. Tim Burton's been very critical of people publicly. Mm -hmm. He said he had nothing but shiny things to offer about his lead actress saying Ortega had Wednesday in her soul. You kind of have to be Wednesday and that's what she is. 
uh, whether she likes it or not, she's got that in her soul and as a person. So well, she apparently gets the, the audiences feel that that it, she reflected the character fairly. So if their changes were left in, by the way, it sounds like they were, they were made for the better. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I knew it was a side note, but I, I love this whole... You could take a lot of shit, and you, but you can't call it out. Like if you work on something, be it comics, or we've had we've experienced this in comics, or um, you know, blogging or whatever, and you have uh, somebody that's doing a lot of really shitty things and, and uh, not cool things, you're not allowed to call them out because if you call them out, you're you're negative. You're you're not very professional. And then meanwhile, these people get to keep doing their really unprofessional, crappy things on their end, but and then the, th- the threat of we're going to sue you or whatever. You yeah. know, and you're not, and you're not allowed to say, "Hey, you can't do that," because then you'll be you'll be painted and labeled as the unprofessional one, when the other person might have been the one that was being unprofessional. Well, I think again, when you've got a guy calling her out publicly for speaking about the situation publicly, you're literally doing what you accused her of doing, mm-hmm. and apparently he walks it back. But yeah, I mean, we had headlines like this. Well, this yeah, is a, think of we thought. Yeah, uh, Wednesday star Jenna Ortega's rude comment should kill her career, and then comparing her to Catherine Heigl from. Uh, Grey's Anatomy, and um, I don't think that's. I think in this case, again, I don't know her. We don't obviously. know what happened for real, to be honest. But with. the fact that Tim Burton is going on about her, that Tim Burton the fact wants to that work she with her got, again, she got promoted to executive producer. She's getting a second season because it was so popular. And if her changes are, it's true, like she says, then then she did right to make the changes she made. It yeah, worked. and Tim Burton obviously was on board with it because he's in charge of the show ultimately, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to hire her to be Lydia's daughter and Beetlejuice too." Mm-hmm. So that, I like her that much, and he does attack people. I mean, he he does not pull punches publicly. So um, yeah, so he has to walk it back. So here we go. A couple days later, probably after he got he got dogpiled by a bunch he got of some stands, calls. he probably got some calls too. Like, what the hell are you doing? You you were in charge of the second Pacific Rim that people hated. Shut the hell up. Shut up, Steven. My comments were about breaking the trust that we all have on set and during the production process that our creative differences will stay in the family. It was never about our creative concerns, which are valid. Well, wait, they're valid now. You just said we don't need people like that in Hollywood, in the business. Yeah. How can they be valid but not valid two days before? Right. Uh, it's called a phone call and, and the, a threat. The first part, we all need to keep our, you know, our creative differences in the family, which means... If you have a problem, you're supposed to shop about it or you're a toxic, you know, unprofessional person. It sounds like Take al- our abuse. It sounds like an alcoholic family. Like you can't talk about mom's drinking. That's what it reminds me of abuse. <laughs> you have to keep the abuse in the family. You can't talk about it. They keep a lot of abuse uh in the dark there in Hollywood, don't they? Especially when it comes to young actors and actresses. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't talk about that. Uh but yeah. yeah. They said, How are you shitting on her in public any different? I, exactly. I agree. I agree. If she's wrong, he's wrong. So you, either you're both wrong or you know. Again, I can't stress this enough. She's an amazing talent. That's not the way he basically called her an entitled brat before. It was just an unfortunate situation to expose creative differences publicly. And I'll also admit that writers are on edge because of the impending strike, myself included, a perfect storm. Somehow, I don't think Stephen will be back for season two. Well, it's funny to me because right, right, the writing, yeah, there is a writer strike coming again. But, you know, and because she complained about some of the, she said she went to the writers and talked about why she wasn't going to do things. It wasn't like she just did it and didn't tell them, apparently. And, you know, so now they're trying to say, well, the writers, the writers were doing what, they're, they're just up, they're just uppity because of the strike. And it's like, but this is a script that was written a while ago. It was filmed a while ago. I was just having a really bad day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But way before the strike. Basically, she came out and said the writers didn't know what the, they were talking about when it came to well, Wednesday sure. Adams. Well, I, I would love to know, okay, what did the writers work on previously? I mean, that's probably easy enough to find out. But I, I, I kind of, in my mind, have an idea, uh, given the situation at this point. Whether well, it's true or not, I don't know. But again, that's what I'm picturing. We're, we're seeing this a lot with Netflix. You know, The Witcher, prime example. Um, Henry Cavill left now. He wasn't as scathing, but he's basically like, you know, it's deviating from the source material. And they went on the attack. The the, the Witcher writers went on the attack. Well, the one person that was one of the writers got gone or left because of it and has said on on X-Men 97 that they, they, they expect the people they're bringing in for the writers team to to know the source material be fans of it because they don't want to be like the witcher where they actively hate the source material and this is the person that keeps trying to vilify so well, he was fired because he was a jerk yeah that was uh bo de and he's he's actually like the one hope i have for anything 
good related to the X-Men coming out of Disney current year because he has actually said that he doesn't want anybody working on X-Men 97 unless they actually love classic X-Men, which Marvel Comics doesn't. But yeah, uh, he was critical of The Witcher and the writers came after him publicly. Mm -hmm. They did. And um, because there's a lot of speculation that Henry Cavill quit because they were deviating from the books. Well, we know his opinions of The Witcher and Witcher's writer's room was not good because flat out said with X-Men 97 that he didn't want them to actively despise the source material like was happening on The Witcher. Yes. So I'm like, you know. So this to me sounds like a Netflix problem. Uh, I think Netflix tries to push shit that they shouldn't be pushing. So yeah, this guy, he has to you know put his tail between his legs. Back to work as always. Be kind to each other. Even when we vehemently disagree. And yes, there are times that I need to heed my own advice. We're all emotional work it works in progress. Love to all of you. But you got his ass hand, hand, handed to him. And the thing is, like, it went from, you know, there's no room for people like her in the business to, golly gee, I guess I just got overly emotional. We all have to love each other and work together. Yeah. The overlord said so. Well, here, here's something else that came up, too. Yeah, it was like everything she does, everything I had to play did not make sense for her character. The love triangle. There's a line about, like, this dress that she has to wear for a school dance. And she said, oh, my God, I love it. Ugh, I can't believe I said that. I literally hate myself. And I had to go, no, there's no way. There is no way. She's, she's right. She's I mean, not wrong. She's not wrong. If you've ever seen any Wednesday Adams anything, that would not have happened. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, he was, uh, he worked on... Daredevil for Netflix, Jupiter's Legacy, which got canceled, and Pacific Rim Uprising, which does not exist. So shut up, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, shut up. He got called out, and they probably everybody figured out it was him, and so he felt like he had to defend himself. But you know, if you're going to call somebody out for airing dirty laundry in public, you don't do the same thing mm -hmm. right back. If you're supposed to be the professional, you don't do it on Twitter. You would have been, people would have been talking to her privately and not making it out in public. Right, right. So anyway... We're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.